All right, guys, you're looking at the Ridgeback. This is the newest kit to come out of Law Lock Picks in the UK. This thing is absolutely awesome. Look at that selection of picks. I've been playing with it for about a week, and I think when we take this thing apart, look at some details, you're going to be just as impressed as I was. So stick around. Let's open it up and take a look. All right, let's get the important stuff out of the way since everybody wants to know how much does it cost. Well, in the UK, they sell for 80 pounds. You get free delivery. Uh, and then if you want to buy it in North America, it's 80 pounds plus nine and a half pounds for shipping. That works out $116 delivered to your door. Of course, if you live uh, in the U.S., we don't have to pay the, uh, the VAT tax either. So you're looking at 116 bucks for 10 hooks, eight rakes. We get a total of seven tensioners and then this awesome nylon case. So let's take a closer look at these guys. All right, first of all, let's look at the handles. These all measure 23 thousandth in thickness. That's 0 0.6 millimeter. So a nice thickness. Um, it's a good general purpose pick. Gets into a lot of keyways. Perhaps not some of the most paracentric ones, but as a beginner, you're probably not going to be attacking those anyway. Uh, everything you see, pretty much all these cuts are for aesthetics. I mean, it looks cool, but unless you're going to put these on a key ring to carry them around on a string or something in your pocket, uh, probably not going to be using the cutaways. What is useful and what tells me that uh, Andy Law has been kind of approaching the international market, you'll notice that we have these little, almost like little knurlings, little crenellations on the top and the bottom. Well, when you're in the U.S., we generally pick with our pins up on the top. So you hold it like so, and you'd pick it very, very comfortably. In the U.K., they put the pins on the bottom and in Europe. So again, you hold it exactly the same way, no matter if you're in the U.S. or in Europe, the rest of the world pins downwards. So very cool, very well thought out, very ergonomic. It's comfortable. These little crenellations aren't really super sharp. They don't put cuts or anything into your finger. Very nicely done, I got to say. Very well thought out. Um, let's go ahead and start at the picks. Like, let's take a look at these hooks. Now, this is the very first. I've arranged them in amount of curvature. So the one with the least amount of curvature is actually, this profile is one of my favorites. And let me grab my Attila. So I use this little Attila. This one is from Sparrows. So when you take a look at them, they're almost identical. Not quite, but very, very close. I use this all the time. It's great not only to pick uh, like master locks, anything that doesn't have a lot of variation in the pins, this is a great pick. Also, because it's rounded, you can kind of use it to drag and zip locks open very quickly. So I really like this profile. And you're going to hear me say that a lot as we go through this kit. There's a lot of my favorite profiles in there. And then we start getting into, the, I'll just pick up these three because they are the short hook, the medium hook, and the deep hook. And there's what they look like. Fairly standard industry profiles. Nicely shaped. And when you take a look at these, they're, they're all very nicely tumbled. There's no sharp edges. You can tell, here's another, this is a deep hook, but with a profile cutaway. So just to give you a little bit extra reach, or if you're going after very fine pins, small pins, like you'd find in some master locks and uh, for sure in an American, those little tiny pins. Anyway, these are well tumbled. When you look at the edges, I would probably touch them up with a little sandpaper, but I mean, they're so well tumbled all over, I didn't find a single sharp edge anywhere. So you could probably use these right out of the box. Just start picking right away and not worry about doing anything to them. Here we start getting into, these profiles are almost exact copies from the SS Dev, the deepest hooks. Very nicely done. And I use those all the time, particularly in European locks. And then we get into, three, well, two of my favorite profiles. That would be these guys. Now, there's a little bit of difference. And the, the top one is my absolute favorite pick. It is a DeForest Half Diamond. And then this is a DeForest Ball. But when you put them side by side, it's not an exact copy of the profile. We get a little bit more curvature here. So it's not a duplicate of the half diamond. If we have a little bit deeper pins, this gives us a little bit more reach. So kind of cool, very well thought out. And then the last one, again, let me compare this to the most curvature from the DeForest series. I never thought I would find a whole lot of use for that top profile, but I recently had lunch with Christina Palmer, one of the very the most gifted lock uh, pick designers uh, on the planet. She designed all the rakes for uh, Tool, all their user kits and all that. 
And she says this is a really useful thing because it's got a little bit more curvature than the forest. And I started using it in the last week or so, and that's absolutely true. I'm starting to really like that profile. I don't have any yet, but I'm going to definitely have to grab a couple. Now we move into the rakes. Now, you guys have seen these before. I'm not even going to spend a lot of time. A, a city rake, very nicely done, very standard. You can look in there and see it's well tumbled. There are no sharp edges, and this is a good one to judge that on. We get a standard snake rake. I won't even lift him up. And then we get into the Bogotas. Now we get a double peak Bogota, but we don't get a triple peak. And the reason we don't get a triple peak is because right away you drop it into the quint, the five humpers. Now there's a little bit of difference here. These are not exact copies of the uh, Bogota. You notice the Bogota is a lot sharper, a lot sharper on the tip and a little bit wider frequency be between the peaks. These two are actually duplicates of each other and these are probably some of the most frequently used picks. And I think that's why Law Lock Picks included two of them. I use these all the time. These are the, I can't remember the name from Tool, but uh, the height of these, I think they call them the cycle. Uh, I'm not even going to guess because I'll be wrong. But because I use them all the time, I put a lot of stress on them. I bend them back and forth and I end up breaking them. And I usually break them like right at that last, come on, focus, focus, right at that last hump right there. By having two of them, you got a spare. And I think that's probably why they did it. They also did it with this little guy. It's slightly higher pitch than the one you just saw, but it's a four humper, and these are exact copies of each other. They're smoothed off on the edge, so you can uh, drag them in and out of the keyway. Sharp ones tend to get caught, but these nice smooth ones slide in and out. You can rake very, very quickly. Got one with a spare, and I think that's, that is not an accident. They did that on purpose. And the last one, and I'm going to get laughed at, uh, I always say Taipene, T-I-P-E-N-E, -E, out of Australia, and everybody else says Tippany, Tippany. Well, whatever. He's a fantastic pick designer, and this is what he came up with. This is called the Nessie because it looks like the Loch Ness Monster. There's the top of it. There's her head right there. But the idea of this is that one side of it is a hook, and the other side's a rake. So if you want to rake it for a little while, you can do that, and then just flip it over, and you can finish off the lock with single pin picking. Very cool little pick. I have one on my bench and I use it all the time. Now let's talk about the tensioners because there's some unusual stuff here too. The three tensioners come in the same width. They're, they're all straight shaft. There's no twist in them. You can put a twist very easily with a pair of pliers, but he's giving you the option of whether you want that or not. When you look at the top of them though, they're not the same width. We have the wide one, we have a medium, and then we have a thin, and they're all tapered very nicely done, very smooth, no sharp edges. These actually give you more flexibility than just three widths because you can slide it in along that angle to fit the exact width that you want. So very well thought out and very well executed. And the last one I'm impressed with, we've seen these little guys, but these are just a little bit different. Let's first take a look why. These typically top of the keyway tensioners have a short end and then they have a long end. And the long ends are usually, they're kind of unstable because they're going inside of a recessed keyway. And these have, if you take a look, if I can get the camera to focus, they have little cuts, little serrations. A lot of these do have that feature. But on the end that is very stable and doesn't often fall out because it's almost flush with the face of the lock, the small end does not have serrations. And I think the reason they did that is because a lot of pickers only have a few locks. And if they have serrations on the short one, which is the one you use most often, you end up basically wallowing out the top of the keyway because the serrations really do grip well. So if you got a lock that you need to grip well, use the end with the serrations. The other side, just use the smooth one. Um, these are kind of unique in that we have four different four different widths. We have 0 0.029 or 29 thousandths, which is 0.76 millimeter. We have 0.37 inches or 37 thousandths. That's 0.95 millimeter. We have 45 thousandths, which is 1.15 millimeter. And then we have the Monster. Now take a look at this guy. Um, this guy measures 80 thousandths of an inch thick. This is like a crowbar. It's like the crowbar of life. You can pry open car doors with this thing. Or two millimeters in thickness. Now, I got to say, this probably would be very useful. I often run across keyways with really wide 
top of the keyway. And I've, I've oftentimes taken two of these and held them together to fit them into the keyway so that the, the tensioner doesn't kind of flop around. With this monster, you don't need to do that. It's all in one. So very well thought out. I'm definitely have to get one of these, see if Andy sells these guys. Anyways, guys, there you go. This, as I said, is the Ridgeback brand new kit out of Law Lockpicks in the UK. It sells for $116 US delivered to your door. Or if you are lucky enough to live in the UK, 80 pounds with free delivery. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe, stay legal. If you want to know how to win this kit, stick around. I'll tell you how to do it. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, Purple Band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click Submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys. <laughs>